Uh, it's fantastic. Just buy it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> ah! Okay, I, uh, I've never done this before, just a first impression style video, but, uh, I plan on doing a whole review for this game, and there is so much to talk about. Holy crap! Uh, uh, Nintendo showed us nothing! Alright, I did it. <gasps> oh! Oh! I did it! Should, this, for, for the most part, this is going to be spoiler-free. As most spoiler-free as I can for this first impressions. But I got to tell you, within the first few hours, there is so much that happens that I had no idea was going to happen. There is a whole part of this game, uh, an entire section, uh, <laughs> an entire map, essentially, that Nintendo didn't even talk about, that you get access to right from the start. I am going to do my best to not spoil anything, and I've only played the first, like, 10 hours, but there is so much I could spoil even in that 10 hours, and I haven't even scratched the surface. In fact, I streamed last night, you might have watched it, I streamed everything that I've played so far, and in my entire 10 hours, I never even left the little starting area. Just the start of Hyrule Castle, I haven't even left there yet. There was so much to do, both in the sky, on the ground, and we'll get to it. There's also an entire plateau area that, that I went through. It took several hours as well. So there's a lot we can talk about, and I want to talk about it all. This is my first impressions of the game. I clearly absolutely freaking love it, and I can only assume I'm going to love it more as I go. But again... There will be a full actual review. This is just me gushing over the game. And let's be real, it's Zelda. The, if you like Zelda, you're gonna like this game. Not only did I play the game for eight hours on stream, as soon as I ended, I went straight to bed and kept playing in handheld mode. And I gotta tell you, this new Satisfy Grip is sick. Do you see how good it looks on the Zelda OLED Switch? You also have the back now has a cool design thanks to the grip. Not that this is bad, but I did say it was kind of bland. And now it has this cool green and gold look on it. The reason why I'm showing you this is not only because it's sick and it just came to my house today, but because Satisfy is sponsoring this video. And you can get 15% off of one of these if you use code BEATEMUPS. It's their new Mythic Edition. And this offer won't last long because these things are selling super fast. Now, I might be a little biased, but I think this is their best looking grip. And I say that as someone who released a grip with them <laughs> that I designed, and I still think this is the best one. And if you've never used a Satisfy grip before, I can't play my Switch without it at this point. Whenever I play normally, I get wrist pain, my fingers go numb, this is such a nice ergonomic feel. There's an offset on the right one so that your hands fit perfectly in shape. No one else is doing that. And it lets me sit there for hours playing games. My Switch battery will die before my hands do. <laughs> it just looks so cool. If you want one, use code BEATEMUPS, get 15% off. I cannot recommend using one of these enough, but let's keep talking about Zelda. I, I really don't know where to begin. I, I really, really don't. I, I've had this thought pinging through my head all morning that N N Zelda has just gone in such an interesting direction. I, I mean, Zelda used to be the story of this boy who wakes up one day and finds out that he has to go on a quest and along the way there's a bunch of dungeons and puzzles and then he saves the princess at the end or sometimes his sister and that was kind of the formula that we've always had. Breath of the Wild introduced a lot of new ideas and concepts and then Tears of the Kingdom has just fleshed those out even more and now to me Zelda is weird and wacky. It's what can we Mate, what can we combine? How can we solve this puzzle? It's not, what is the one answer to this puzzle? How do I get this key for this door by solving it the way it, as intended? It's, how do I solve this puzzle? And what weird and wacky ways do I explore the world? It's, it's so bananas now. The focus is so much on creation and, ex and exploration. Way more than it ever was before. Okay, so you start the game with this really cool 
cinematic. You're walking through a cave with Zelda. The music, my guy. This is one of the most intense starts to a Zelda. It is the most intense start to a Zelda game we've ever had. I was on edge. Oh my god, this is creepy, man. And the music, the piano keys kicking up. Oh, just goosebumps the whole time. It was mystical, wonderful, <laughs> terrifying. I mean, just taking the creep level up to a hundred. A lot of a lot of questions we had about where the arm came from gets answered immediately. A lot of things that were in the trailers that were cut just moments before we would have had answers. Again, I don't want to dissect this too much because the game only just came out technically today. I was playing a day early because it released in Australia early. So I don't want to ruin anything. I do want to keep this spoiler free so people can enjoy it for the first time. But I love the direction of the story. It's really interesting. Um, it is shades of Ocarina of Time. Like there are so many Ocarina references and Easter eggs and callbacks and enemies and it's really interesting to get this new, almost futuristic sky area, but also be so thrown back into Ocarina of Time. Classic bomb flowers back? Whoa! What year is it? I thought maybe I would miss Magnesis of all abilities. I was like, that was kind of fun because you could like pluck metal chests out from the ground and it was a cool ability. I never even really thought about the fact that this new hand ability is just telekinesis on everything. You can pick up everything now. It doesn't have to be metal. You can literally pick up anything that's not nailed to the ground and then stick it to something else. You can do it with objects to create motorbikes or go-karts or flying machines. But yeah, you can also stick weapons together now and combine into super weapons and really long swords and whatever your imagination can think of. I mean, just going through some of the puzzle sections, there's clear ways that they kind of want you or they're telling you you can solve this puzzle this way, but you can solve it your own way. Oh, that was tough. So all this is on the plateau, the, 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 the garden of time, I think they called it, where you're in the sky and you're learning about a lot of the new mechanics and you also have to visit several shrines again. It is really shades to Breath of the Wild. It's essentially a plateau area. You can't leave until you've equipped all of the new abilities and then found your way out and then you get access to the whole game. It's really cool. I like the way they did it. I'm, I'm not gonna ruin anything else there. I guess I'll say visually, I love the way it looks. The, the autumn look to it is gorgeous. Again, the music is out of control. I love the way that clouds will billow and breeze through the, uh, the sky islands while you're on them. It will literally go hazy for a second as a cloud passes by. Really helps feel like you're up in the sky. But also being able to look down and see Hyrule in pretty clear, crisp visuals. I'm very impressed by the Switch here. When I'm falling down or flying around, you can really see Hyrule very clearly in the distance. Like everything all the way back expanding in nice, it's like a nice draw distance. I'm very surprised by the Switch here and what Nintendo are managing to pull from this console. I mean, there are times where it struggles. I mean, when we were on the Sky Island, there were times where we had frame dips. Maybe the visuals didn't look as clear as I would like. But then there are other times where it just completely blows me away. And I will say, I played in bed for about an hour last night off stream in handheld mode. And on my OLED screen, it looked gorgeous. I, I've played on this monitor, my big 4K TV and handheld. And handheld by far looks the best. It's just nice and compressed down there on the 720p screen. On the OLED, it pops. The colors are beautiful. Okay, without ruining any more of the plateau, you go down in the high roll. And the one thing I'll say is, I, I, I was, there's a lot of things I'll say, but I didn't know how they were going to handle running straight to the boss. I was, are they, they going to do that again? Because they haven't mentioned it or talked about it. And it doesn't appear appear that way at all. I mean, as I said, I'm eight hours in right now and there is no indication that there is a boss I can go and rush to um, unless I missed something. I'm pretty sure this is more of a tailored story where you kind of have to follow along to some beats before you get to the end. I I'm not sure if it's going to change at any point and maybe halfway through the game 
you'll get the option to just finish it or you can do more stuff. Uh, right now, though, where I am at the game, it's, again, Shades of Breath of the Wild. It's opened back up to you have four points on the map, all the villages again, and you can hit them in any order. So it feels, again, like Breath of the Wild and you can pick which guardian you want to go to first, except right now, I'm just trying to look for clues on what happened to Zelda and we have to go to all of the towns. Um, so a lot of people were watching that and looking at that and thinking about that. And they were like, well, is this too similar to Breath of the Wild? A big concern is, is it just DLC to Breath of the Wild? Is Tears of the Kingdom actually new, new? I would say it is well and far and truly a new, new. And there's a whole area of the game we haven't talked about yet that explains why. But I, I will say there are certainly a lot of similarities. I mean, having to start looking for Korok kids again. Now, there are some different ways. There's like this little guy that keeps getting lost from his friend and you have to find interesting and unique ways of getting him back to his friend and you get multiple Korok seeds for doing that, not just one. Yo, this is actually sick. I can't steer it. I feel like there's a way to steer eventually. Oh no! Oh no! And then having to re-explore the map and go up the towers again. It feels, it feels a little silly at first just because I just did this. I've done all of this. Why am I having to do this again? You know, I'm back in Hyrule naked again, trying to find hearts and clothes. So there is a little bit that feels maybe repetitive, but it is so buried in the intense amount of extra things that are going on as you play. Like everything has been fleshed out, even if just a little bit. It's almost like this is Breath of the Wild times 10. It's like the Zelda, it's like Nintendo weren't done when they released Breath of the Wild. They released it and they were happy with it. It's a great game. It's almost like they never actually got to finish it. And this is finishing it, just adding in so much more. So again, like mapping the ground now, you're not just remapping Hyrule, you get blasted in the sky and you remap Hyrule and you map the sky at the same time because there's like a whole sky area in this game. So you're mapping both at once. And now here is the one thing I'll say because this might convince people to get the game and it is spoilery. It's spoiler territory because Nintendo didn't mention this at all. And I'm fine. I, this is baffling because it is such a big part of the game. Like it, this blows my mind, but not only do you have a Hyrule and do you have the sky? There's a whole underground of Hyrule now. Like the entire underground of Hyrule is explorable. Like there's, it's, it's like Minecraft almost. You get to go down underneath Hyrule. You get to mine for things and supplies. You find cursed enemies down there infected with gloom that will attack you and then take hearts away from you. It's extra challenging down there and it's pitch black and you have to use these gloom blobs to like light up some of the cave or some of the some of the underground and it's the funnest and coolest exploration because every time you hit a bulb on something and it lights up a whole new area you're like holy crap it just keeps going and going and there are so many things to find down there i don't want to ruin what i was finding down there but again more throwbacks to ocarina just cool and <laughs> fights and things to discover and again, just mining for those materials that you need to take back to the surface and then use to upgrade. And it's just so expansive. I kept finding holes in the ground, craters in the ground, wells. Now you can just go down into like any orifice that's on the ground and find whole caverns and things to explore underneath. Like you're not just exploring Hyrule again. You're going, you're trying to walk somewhere and suddenly you find yourself in the sky exploring a platform. Suddenly you find yourself underground exploring the depths and mining. Like you can't ever make it anywhere without being paused or stopped to go and do something else. It's a 10 out of 10 game for me so far. That's not even being facetious. I mean, as far as video games go, this is 10 out of 10. Uh, we'll see if it changes as we go along. But that's just my first impressions of the game so far. I feel like I have barely, barely scratched the surface. I also am a huge Zelda fan, and I and I Breath of the Wild is one of my favorite games of all time. So yeah, I probably am a little biased on it. But the creativity of it all, just the direction of it, the excitement I feel while playing it, the constant smile I have on my face as I discover every new thing. Nintendo just has this way of innovating in video games and in their, in their hardware even that is just unmatched and unparalleled and they're not afraid to experiment 
and take giant risks and stabs at, at different concepts and a lot of them pay off. And I mean, this one again has just completely paid off for me. Yeah, I love it. And I'm streaming it. Obviously you might've seen it on YouTube and Twitch, but I'm live on Twitch again tonight and every night until I'm finished with it. Um, so come hang out, come check out me playing the game. Um, that's why my hair is all kind of zelda -y right now. I'm in the season, I'm in the spirit to be jolly. All right, I love you guys. If this is your first time here, like, comment, subscribe, all that crap. Uh, let me know if you're picking up the game. Let me know if this convinced you to pick up the game. And then after my streams, look out for my actual full review of this thing. I never even reviewed Breath of the Wild. So this is a huge undertaking. I feel like I've got to just review both in one somehow, but we'll see. Okay, I, I want to shut up because I want to keep playing the game. See ya.